Hi everyone, it's me again. I just wanted to show you a quick thing that I built on the weekend. The backstory is that I have a friend who got hospitalized and I want to send him a get well card, but not just some, you know, ordinary stuff. And I want to build something and he's kind of a techie too, so something that would, you know, make him smile. And I came up with this circuit. It's a AT tiny microcontroller in its uh, default configuration very very little uh, extra circuitry it's a 100 nanofarad blocking capacitor and here a 10 kilo ohm uh, reset resistor and again a 100 nanofarad um, capacitor on the reset pin against ground so that it does a nice reset 3 volt battery and a switch and just a little speaker and I'm going to show you what it does. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so basically from the circuit it's, uh, there is not really a lot to explain. Um, it's really dead simple, just the very, very standard uh, schematic. Um, I had to build a little bit of a makeshift, um, makeshift battery holder because uh, it was difficult to solder. Um, the top side of this CR20, um, it's a 2032, I think, um, was uh, okay to solder but the bottom side didn't solder at all so I basically just used a spring that I soldered onto and some wire wraps and that works out very nicely. So to explain what's actually going on it's um, pretty simple as I said um, if we have the microcontroller on this side um, basically uh, this is a AT tiny 26 and uh, one port pin this is the PB3 or the uh, OC1B pin basically just directly um, drives a speaker which is connected to ground on the other side so circuit wise it couldn't be much easier the uh, pin output of the AT Tiny is very capable of pushing and pulling, so this is going to be okay. And since I use the OC1B pin, I can directly connect that to the AT Tiny's PWM circuit. So then, all you need to do is output the correct PWM frequencies for the notes you want to generate and have the appropriate delays. And surprisingly, though I, I thought this should be really easy, it was not. Finding a tune that was sufficiently uh, well done so that it could be easily recognized turned out to be quite difficult. And I'll explain how I did it. So what I ended up using was called RTTTL, or the Ringtone Text Transfer Language. So this is a specialized format that was used for older cell phones uh, to be able to get some tunes on there. And the way it works is that there are 12 notes uh, which are specified. And I don't know a lot about music so please excuse me if I uh, say something really dumb here but it's just the way I understood it. Here are the 12 notes um, are C, C sharp, D, D sharp. I don't even know if the symbol is called sharp in music, but I just, I don't know. So G, G sharp, and A, A sharp, and B. Um, the B and the E, they don't have sharp. So each of those um, have an index from ranging from 1 to 11. Um, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And each of those are associated with a octave, uh, which is usually a number from 4 to 8 or something. So you'll see notes like C sharp 4, 
E5, something like that. Now, in order to um, get this all on a microcontroller, you'll have to convert that to some frequencies, right? And the way you calculate those frequencies is what I'm going to show you next. So basically, at first, you are going to need a point of reference. And usually, this is the A at 440 hertz. This is a little bit inconvenient because uh, A in our description has uh, the offset 9. So I basically calculated down and chose C3 to be the reference. And I chose C because C has the note offset 0, obviously. It's the lowest one in each octave. And that is 261.63 hertz. Okay. So this is our bass tone. Now, for each note, there is an offset. And for each octave, there is also an offset, which needs to be multiplied by 10. So let's say we want to calculate the frequency of A sharp 5. First, A sharp, as we saw in the previous uh, slide, has the offset 10. And 5 is two octaves from our base point. So we multiply that 2 by 12 get 24 and we add the 10 from here so we need to calculate the frequency for the 34th note so to recap that again we have a bass tone frequency of 261.63 Hertz and we have a note offset of 34 that we want to calculate now we're looking for the frequency of that node 34. That we can get by multiplying the base frequency times the 12th square root of 2 to the power of O. Or in our case, this will be F times the 12th square root of 2 to the 34th. So if we're calculating that, we take 261.63 Hertz times, and now we can write that a little bit differently, times 2 to the power of 34 divided by 12. Okay? And if we enter that into our calculator, I hope you can see that. Okay. So. We enter that in our calculator, 261.63 times 2 to the power of 34 divided by 12. This gives us the frequency of the tone, 1864.7 Hertz. So now to get this on the microcontroller um, from the RTTTL input, I first used a little Python script which parsed all the notes from the C sharp, D sharp, and so on notation into a list of tuples of a certain frequency and a duration. So each note had a certain frequency in hertz and a duration in seconds, and pauses were actually denoted by a zero frequency here. And from this list, now I want to listen to the tune on my PC in order to judge it before putting it on, on the microcontroller. So I wrote a second script, um, a Python simulator, which was basically a Python script that uses SciPy and it created a WAV file that I could listen to on my PC. As soon as I was satisfied with the result, I took that same list and uh, put it as input to a second script of mine, um, the Python code generator, which is actually the crucial step in here. What the code generator does is, for each note of a certain frequency, it sets the PWM clock divider, so that's the, the prescaler of timer 1 in my case, 
it sets the OCR1B register and the OCR1C register to hit the right node. And basically just generated code output that continuously set those three variables and had a little delay loop uh, with the recording millisecond variable here after each node and I could just copy and paste that, compile it, put it on the microcontroller, run it and it basically worked on the first try perfectly. You'll find all the code that I used on here uh, on my homepage. It's all open source, um, all publicly available if you want to build that yourself. Just one more quick note. You will notice there is no ICSP in Circuit Serial Programming adapter on here because obviously of the tight space. And just a quick tip on how I do that with the AT Tiny series or basically every microcontroller that I don't want to put an extra ICSP output on there. I have built a special cable which has the standard ICSP output temp in header on one side which goes directly in my programmer. You'll see this is a AT Tiny 26 cable and here I've taken a IC socket and just cut it in half and soldered the wires directly on there and this gives me the ability to when I want to program this just basically cram it right on here and it works really nicely um, much better than I expected and I can basically just clip this on here and will just um, hold in place I can program the device and if I'm done I'll just disconnect it and everything will be awesome. So this is how the whole finished greeting card looks like. It's the circuit is on here and on the inside I actually used a PLCC chip that I just glued on here that I didn't need um, and I scavenged from some device just as a fun gag. And Basically that's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe you're going to build one yourself. Have fun. Bye.